Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to make a rotisserie chicken. <clears throat> what I got here is a, about a six and a half pound roasting chicken. I washed it and dried it, patted it dry with paper towels. Uh, I got this one did come with the, the neck and the liver and the gizzard and the heart and all that. And I got all that out of there, pitched it. I'm not going to use it, but <clears throat> make sure you don't have any of those uh, giblets inside your bird before you cook it. You don't want to cook that chicken with that stuff in there. So anyhow, uh, the next step, I got about three tablespoons of butter. I'm going to put right inside the cavity of the chicken, stick it up in there. And that's cold butter right out of the refrigerator and that's going to melt. <clears throat> As the uh, chicken cooks and turns, that butter is going to melt and <clears throat> kind of baste the chicken from the inside as it cooks. Next, I'm going to insert my spit fork. There's, I'm going to put the other fork on this side. And I want to get that kind of centered in the middle of the spit. I think that looks pretty close. And then we just tighten our little wing nuts down. Okay, next step is for me to secure these legs and wings because we don't want them flopping around uh, while it's spinning around the rotisserie. So I'm going to do that uh, and I'll get back with you because that might take a few minutes. I'll be back. All right, got that chicken all tied up. It, was, it fought with me, but I got them all tied up. Hopefully he won't flop around when he starts spinning on the grill. Uh, there's a lot of uh, good videos on YouTube on how to truss a chicken, and they make it look so easy, and I can't do it. Uh, I kind of just tie it up the best I can, and I do it a little bit different each time. So anyhow, that's what we're going with. Uh, next, I'm going to take some olive oil. I'm just going to rub all over the chicken. Try to get it all over the skin. Like that. And I'm just going to see it very simply today with some garlic salt. And some black pepper. And I'll probably season this again after I get it on the grill just to make sure I've got good coverage. Once it starts spinning, it's a lot easier to get your seasoning everywhere where you need it. So I'm going to get my grill set up and I'll meet you outside. All right, I got the grill set up. I don't know how well you can see this, but I've got my charcoal baskets on either side, the drip pan full of water in the middle, and our chicken's ready to go on. And I'm just gonna flip the switch, and it's gonna start spinning. And like I said, I think I'm going to go ahead and season it one more time, make sure I've got good coverage on everything while it's spinning. Yeah, a little more pepper. I'll get the side when it comes around. That's good enough. I've got a couple sticks of cherry. I throw on, add a little smoke. And put the put the lid on. 
and the hard work is done. I'm going to try to maintain the temperature of this grill around 350. It doesn't have to be exactly 350. It could be higher or lower. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not cooking chicken for NASA here, and I certainly am not a, a rocket scientist, so this is what we're going with. <clears throat> um, like I said, the hard work's done. I'm just going to get this temperature kind of stabilized, and uh, we'll check back in a little bit. All right. Chicken's been on about an hour. Let's take a look at it and see what we got. Yeah, we're getting some good color to it. It's looking good. No, not anywhere near done. It's probably going to be at least another hour. Uh, we'll see. Maybe, maybe between two and a half and three hours will be done. It's a pretty big chicken. We'll monitor that and we'll get back with you. Uh, it's starting to get dark on me. I got kind of a late start, so uh, next time I might have to get the flashlight out, but <laughs> we'll be back. All right, we're about an hour and a half in, and I don't know how you can see that. Our chicken's cooking. I just took the temperature. It's about 150. We need to go at least 165. I inserted the uh, thermometer into the thigh. Like I said, we're about 150. It's going to be a little while yet. Um, and uh, my, my fire is starting to uh, dampen down a little bit. We're down to about 300, so I'm going to add a little more charcoal. I'm just going to throw some briquettes on top of the coals here. Bring the fire back up a little bit. And we'll check back in a bit. All right, chicken's been cooking about three hours. It's getting close. I don't know how well you can see that, but we're getting some good color on it. It's getting close to being done. And while you weren't looking, I went in the house and I made just a simple herb butter sauce to baste this with. I just took a half stick of butter and melted it, or a whole stick of butter and melted it. Add a pinch of uh, poultry seasoning, a pinch of oregano, a pinch of uh, basil, a pinch of garlic salt, and a pinch of uh, Mrs. Dash original seasoning. I'm just going to baste that, start basting this chicken with this simple herb butter sauce. And you could add uh, whatever kind of sauce you like, uh, like an Asian sweet and sour sauce. Your favorite barbecue sauce, whatever you don't. In fact, you don't have to add anything. This chicken will be just perfectly fine without <coughs> any other sauce or basting liquid. But today, I decided to use this simple herb and butter sauce. That smells really good. It's looking really good. Uh, I'm gonna put the lid back on it and baste it about every 10 minutes. I'm gonna say about another half hour of this. Chickens be ready coming off. So I'll be back then. All right, chicken's been spinning almost four hours. And that's what she looks like. Uh, I don't know how you can see that. Darkness has fallen. I should have known that. It happens every night. I apologize for the darkness, but let me see if I can. Can you see that? We got a good color to it. It's looking really good. And it's done. I'm going to take it in the house, wrap it in foil, and uh, let it rest for at least a half hour because it's pretty hot. It's going to take a while before I can handle it <clears throat> and start cutting it up. So uh, I'll meet you back in the house. We'll get a better look at this bird. All right, we got a chicken bug in the house. <clears throat> been resting in foil for about 30 minutes and I just cut the uh, butcher's twine off of it and it's just started falling apart uh, as you can see that's see there's a leg bone it just pulled right out uh, every time I've made one of these rotisserie chickens it just 
kind of falls apart. I, I try to cut it up into pieces, but it just don't work that way. So I'm going to kind of dissect this chicken. I'm going to take a little taste off the breast. I'm going to try to get a little slice here, a little taste. See what we got. Mm. Mm. So delicious and juicy. I don't know. I don't know if you can see the juice in there, but it's so tender and juicy. Um, very good. I'm gonna I'm gonna let this chicken rest a little bit because it's still too hot. I'm gonna I'm gonna just pull it and dissect it and get the meat off the bone. I'll be back. All right, I got me a plate fixed up here. <clears throat> I probably should title this uh, video pool chicken instead of rotisserie chicken. Here's what I got after I I reached in and pulled out the bones, pulled all the meat off. I got a lot of meat right here. And I'm going to be able to eat on this all week. I can make a, I can make chicken salad, a numerous array of chicken sandwiches, uh, stir fry, whatever, whatever you can do with chicken. <clears throat> I've got a lot of meat here and it's delicious. But I fixed me a plate here right now. I'm going to give it a little taste. Uh, this is my rotisserie chicken. This is just some regular old Betty Crocker au gratin potatoes. This is some fried yellow squash that my pretty pretty girlfriend fried for me. And this squash is homegrown. It came from Bologna Ring Ranch. Thank you, Jeff. So I'm gonna give a little taste here and see what see what we got. Hmm. That chicken is very tender, very juicy. It's got a good flavor. I can taste the uh, seasoning and the spices. Everything tastes really good. I gotta try this squash. I'm, I'm just this stuff is like crack to me. I love this stuff. Mmm. Very good. So this is my rotisserie chicken. If you've ever thought about getting a rotisserie for your grill, I would highly recommend it. I've done you know, probably a dozen chickens and some hams. I've done a couple of turkeys. I've done pork roast, beef roast. There's a lot of things you can do with the rotisserie. I've had mine two and a half years and I use it quite a bit. I get a lot of use out of it. and Pretty much everything I've cooked on it turns out really good. So I hope you give it a try. Um, I'll be back in just a minute. I don't want to make this video too long, but I've got to take a quick minute to say something. A few weeks ago, I had a problem with my channel on YouTube, and I was ready to give up and quit making videos altogether. But I found out that several other people had the same problem I did. And uh, through that adversity, I met some really cool people. I made some good new friends. And I want to thank everyone for the support for my channel to keep me going. Uh, I made a a lot of new friends. I've got some new subscribers, and of course, I want to. I don't want to forget my old subscribers and old friends because everybody's helped me along the way. I really appreciate that. Uh, I don't want to mention any names because I'm, I know I will forget somebody. There are so many of you out there. I need to thank, but I think pretty much you know who you are. I really appreciate that. So, here's to you, old friends, new friends, uh, old subscribers, new subscribers. Cheers to you. I'm Greg McCutcheon. As always, I thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.